Hello and welcome to the E Crystal Palace podcast. I'm off on screen and today pod 30 I'll be looking at the result of a Bolton by bringing my match review player rankings and my manner match. As well as this I'm also going to bring you an exclusive interview with Sam Allardyce and Jason Punchin after the game. So let's begin. Christian Menteke came off the bench to rescue Crystal Palace and send them to the 4th round of the FA Cup as they finally saw off Bolton Rondres in this replay. The Trotters had threatened a cup upset when they took the lead early in the second half through James Henry, but after his introduction with a little of 30 minutes to go, the Eagles top scorer showed his class by scoring twice to turn things around and give Sam Allardyce his first win as the manager. Having given Palace plenty of scares at the Macron Stadium 10 days earlier, Bolton continued in that vein and went close after just 11 minutes when just fell a shot with the outside of his foot whistled past Julian Sproni's far post and after Palace had a spell of pressing hard in their final third a corner from Jay Spearings found its way to David Walter but the defender fired over however that was as troubled as the Eagles were in the first half and Allardyce's men began to turn the screw making his first start for the Eagles Sully Kaiko showed his free kick prowess when he was fouled on the edge of the box and fired a set piece goal but it fizzed fractions wide and then Palace thought they had taken the lead when Sully Kaiko's corner was dispatched into the net at the front post by Joe Ledley, but it was via his hand and the goal was correctly ruled out. The host kept pressing towards the end of the first half and Andrews Townsend had a couple of attempts on goal but shot straight at Ben Alwick before blasting the ball into the White Horse Lane stand as a quiet 45 minutes came to an end. However, three minutes into the second half, the Trotters snatched the lead. After winning their free kick just inside the Palace half, Jake Spearn lofted it into the area where he kept it in play by the head of Gary Medill who nodded it back to Henry on the edge of the area and his first time chip went over Sproni and into the top corner to send the travelling trotters into the lights. Eagles response saw Chong Lee drag a ball wide from distance but after Allardyce made a triple change one of his replacements was come up as a trump on 68 minutes. Matthew Flamley got down the right and put a teasing cross into the area where Benteke was waiting to dominate in the air and from Beheader past Ulwick to level the scores. Parity was nearly lost just a couple minutes later when Vela screwed a volley well wide after another knockdown by Madin and that would prove costly soon after as Benteke would once again show his class as he scored the second within 15 minutes of entering the fray. Townsend got past Leroy Wilson on the left flank and it passed the fullback to tee up the Belgian striker who killed the ball dead in the air before swivelling and firing past Ulwick to turn the game on its head. Wilson nearly made amends with 10 minutes to play when he sped down the right and sent a low delivery that was begging to be dispatched. But Zach Koff could only steer the golden opportunity wide, which would prove to be the last of the encounter, and it ensured that Palace would be the ones to host Manchester City in the fourth round next week. Now for some statistics from the game. Possession. 62% Crystal Palace, 38 for Bolton. Shots. 12 for Crystal Palace and 10 for Bolton. Shots on target, 4 for Crystal Palace and 1 for Bolton. Corners, 10 for Crystal Palace and 4 for Bolton. And fouls, 8 for Crystal Palace and 10 for Bolton. A win is a win and why it may not have been pretty, Crystal Palace got the morale boosting victory they craved as they scraped past Bold Wanderers in the FA Cup third round replay. For a while it looked like a cup upset was on the cards after James Henry fired the league one side into the lead two minutes after the restart at Sellers Park. But Christian Menteke came off the bench to score his ninth and 10th goals of the season for Crystal Palace to save manager Sam Allardyce's blushes against his old club and ensure that the Eagles will play Manchester City in the fourth round of the competition. So what do we learn from the game? Here are five things. Number one, Kai Kai's mixed start. On his first ever start for Crystal Palace, Sully Kai Kai showed plenty of promise and endeavour early on and came close to opening the scoring with a wicked free kick that flew inches wide. He did fade as the game went on though, but he was one of the few bright spots for Palace. Number two, fans voting with their feet. Sellers Park was not even half full as Palace fans stayed away on a cold Tuesday night. Maybe the cost of the tickets played a part for some, with many fans critical of the pricing structure. 
and maybe the team's poor form contributed. But with less than 10,000, 700, 149, including 880 Bolton fans to be precise, was telling. Number 3. Missed Opportunity Sam Allardyce said that this would be a chance for his squad players to play and show him what they can do. He warned that not being able to beat League One opponents at home would tell him that they weren't good enough for the Premier League, and while Palace got the win, they didn't show it to him much. It needed a big guns to come on and make the difference. Number 4. Flaming Hell Matthew Flamney is not exactly renowned for his crossing ability, but he popped up down the right to deliver an inch-perfect cross for Christian Minteke to head home the equaliser. It was arguably the best delivery of the night from out wide, and was precisely the kind of ball that Benteke thrives on. And number 5. Benteke to the rescue. Christian Benteke may not have scored for over a month, but he notched two fine goals here to make it 10 for the season. He had the impact off the bench that Sam Allardyce would have wanted, and his efforts ensured Crystal Palace were not on the end of a shock exit from the cup. Manchester City up in 10 days time in the 4th round is next. So now you've heard the match review, we're now going to move on to the player rankings. But before we start, don't forget to follow us across social media on Twitter and Facebook at Crystal Palace for all the latest news. And for all you Facebook users out there, don't forget to check out our Facebook group so you can join in the latest discussions, read the latest news and post your own opinion. So like I said, if you're on social media and you do want to get in contact with us, then of course you can follow us on both Twitter and Facebook and you can find both of them accounts by using the at Crystal Palace. And obviously I would recommend you do follow these pages because I personally do follow them, you know, because if you do want to keep, we do regularly update you with the latest news. So if you do want to keep up to date with all things Palace, including all the January transfer rumours, then of course do go and follow our account because we do regularly update it. And also, you know, everything about Palace really, you know, we do have player and manager interviews on there, as well as having Twitter polls. So if you do want to have a say or have your opinion heard in the Twitter poll, then of course do follow us so you can vote on there. But also if you want to listen or look for exclusive content with player and manager interviews or even just general sort of transfer news, then of course do go on to follow us on both Twitter and Facebook. And obviously if you are on Facebook of course you can you know follow our main Facebook page but I'd, I personally would highly recommend you do join the Facebook group um, which is what I joined before I made the podcast you know and you can find that using the at e Crystal Palace group at and obviously I would highly recommend you do join this group because after the game quite a lot of fans go on there to post their own opinion you know how they felt about the game or anything about the performance they would like to comment on and also you know we've had a few fans in the past posting pictures from how they were at the game but you know if there's anything else you want to say about the game or just anything about Palace you'd like to discuss with other fans or even comment on what other fans had to say then of course do go and follow our Facebook group because that gives you the chance to obviously look at everyone else's content but also post your own content on there to give your opinion and obviously you know, I've said this already, I personally quite liked it when I first joined the group. You know, if you want to hear what others had to say, which I quite often like to do, I like to compare my opinion to others, then of course, you know, I'd recommend you do join a Facebook group. And much like the other social media accounts, you know, the main Facebook account, the Twitter account, you know, we do regularly update you with the latest news. So if you do want to comment on the latest news or even post your own uh, news, which you found the articles, then of course, you know, you can post it in a group so other fans can see it. But you know, if you do want to follow any of these accounts and you can't find it, then of course, if you are listening to the podcast on iTunes or on YouTube, then of course you can click the links in the description below, which will take you to all of our profiles. But obviously, if you are listening to the podcast on YouTube, you know, if you're on iTunes, you can't really do this. But of course, do drop a comment below the video with what you thought about the game and who you thought the best player was throughout the game and anything else you really want to comment about the game. Um, so we can hear what you, have, what you have to say. So obviously you hear my opinion in the podcast and me discussing how the players performed, you know, anything about the game. Do comment below the video with, you know, what your opinion about the game is. But also, because I give you my player rankings, I want you as the listeners to give me your player rankings as well. And obviously I've set this challenge for to the listeners for a few weeks now and actually well a month let's say and quite a lot of people have actually come onto the idea and comment below the videos with their player rankings and it's quite easy similar to what I do I go through each player giving them a rating from 1 to 10 you know 1 being the worst and 10 being the best obviously that's how the players perform throughout the game so obviously this week I'm obviously going to do the same explain my views on the players but what I want you to do in the comments below on YouTube is comment with your player rankings obviously ranking each of the players so I can compare my view of the players and how I thought the players performed to yours to see whether we have a similar outlook on all of the players to see whether we thought they had sort of similar 
input to the game see whether we thought they had the same sort of amount of effort in the game so do comment below with that and obviously it's a great way to have your opinion heard on how you thought the team performed and also it's a good way of comparing mine but similar to you know any normal YouTube comments you know yes you can do this challenge which I'll set to you to obviously comment with the player ranks but also just comment anything you know whether it be the mana match anything you saw about the game do comment below or comment that below the video so obviously we can hear your opinion but obviously now to move on uh, to the player rankings obviously like I do every week but obviously this week because it's a cup game and I explained this in the previous podcast the, the uh, Bolton podcast you know as this is a cup game I'm not going to go into too much detail about the players all, all I'm going to do is give you the rating and also just give you a little description and that's only because a quite a lot of people don't have as much interest in the cup as they do in the league they feel that the league is the main competition so they want to concentrate on that and also you know the, the other reason really be is that you know the the cup isn't really the, our priority this season so we don't we don't necessarily disregard it because we didn't want to lose to Bolton but we don't really care as much as we do in past years because our main focus is to stay in the league and we don't want a cup run like it did last year we don't want that to distract us so they're really the reasons I'm not going to do it because most people don't really care that much about the cup and especially after last year we don't really mind whether we get knocked out but also you know it's not really as interesting as normal games and do comment below whether you think have the same opinion uh, as me you know whether you think that actually the league the cup is important but i personally think you know not as many people have as much interest in it and that's purely because it's not the main competition and really this season especially it is not a priority but now to go on to the player rankings starting in goal with junior Sproni, who i'm going to give a seven The club legend got to play in front of his fans since breaking the club record. Didn't really have much to do. Had no chance with the goal from James Henry, but did everything else right. Now to move on to the back four of Joe Ward, Martin Kelly, Damien Delaney and Zeki Fries. Joe Ward, a six. Nothing much to know. Played well and dealt with most that came his way. It was a straightforward game for him at right back. Given the captain's armband when Delaney was taken off. Martin Kelly, a six. Good performance from a li former Liverpool man in a role that suits him far better. Moved to the centre of defence and did okay. Looked more comfortable and didn't make any mistakes. Dame Delaney, a six. Led by example at the back. Palace needed some experience and leadership at the back and he did okay. Zeki Fries, a six. Another run out at fullback, but he could be one of his last before the if new additions arrive. Nothing really outstanding and didn't get forward to deliver many crosses in. It was a satisfactory performance from him, but he could have showed a lot more. Now to move on to the defensive midfielders of Joe Ledley and Matthew Flamini. Joe Ledley, a 6. Nice passes here and there. Linked up well alongside Flamini. Booked for a handball in the first half for his disallowed goal. Matthew Flamini, a 6. More game time for the Frenchman and just sat in front of the back four. He also assisted Benteke for the equaliser. Now to move on to the attacking midfield of Lee Ching-Yong, Andros Townsend and Sully Kaikai. Lee Ching-Yong, a 6. Lee ran the game in the first half creating chances and passing the ball around. A game he really should have been a stand-up player in, but he wasn't. You feel that he's a team player, but doesn't have the spot that Palace need going forward. Andrus Townsend, a 7. Worked to create something throughout the game in one of his best showings for the club, but was only good in bursts. Against League One opposition, he should have torn them apart. Got an assist with a decent cross from Benteke to net the winner. Sully Kaikai, a 6. Terrific to see the highly rated academy product finally make his first start for the first team after his return from a loan spot at Brentford. The fans wanted to see him in action and he looked good early on but faded unfortunately. Had a few shots and had a free kick from just outside the area which just went over. Promising. Now to move on to the striker Lurk Rumi. 5. Continues to step up his match fitness but no real chances of note. That's okay though as he gradually gets himself up to speed. Now to move on to the substitutes. James Tompkins, no rating. Like for like swap for Delaney for some game time. Jason Punchin, a 6. Brought in to give Palace a bit of creativity through the middle. Christian Benteke, an 8. He has to be man of the match. Save Palace's blushes with two good goals. Good awareness to get on the end of a cross and good chest control and spin to score the other. 
Great to see him score one with his feet too. So now to move on to the Man of the Match award, but before I do that and give you my Man of the Match and who I thought had the biggest influence in the game, I'm now going to give the results of my Twitter poll. So obviously if you do want to vote in next week's Twitter poll and have your opinion heard and who you thought was the best player throughout the game and the player with the biggest influence, then of course you can vote in next week's Twitter poll. And of course the Twitter poll isn't run by eCrystal Palace, it's actually run on my own personal Twitter account which you can find using at the CPC Podcast. So do give me a follow on there, not only so you can vote in next week's poll, but also much like the eCrystal Palace accounts, I do regularly update it with the latest news. So if you do want to keep up to date with all things Palace, then obviously that's the place to go. But once again, you know, if you do want to vote in next week's Twitter poll and have your opinion heard and so it can relate to what happens in the Man of the Match, then of course go and follow me. Well, obviously the four nominations for this week's Man of the Match award were Machi Flamini, Lee Chung Yong, Andres Townsend and Christian Benteke. So obviously it was a pretty good game from us, you know, you would expect against League One opposition for Palace to have a good game and actually Bolton played quite well and give credit to them, you know, they managed to get the first goal, they managed to press us, contain us for most of the game. But obviously, at the end of the day, much like what happened with quite a lot of the other replays, the team with a better quality ended up going through. You know, it was two good quality goals from Christian Menteke, which helped us to win the game. Not to say that this goal scored by Henry, absolutely fantastic goal. Not to say that that wasn't good, but the two moments of quality from Palace was the difference between the two sides. But obviously, before I go on, just to explain, you know, why I've put these, you know, four nominations there. You know, mention must go to Sully Kaiko, who I know that... A few people did comment on my post saying, where is he on the shortlist? You know, he misses out, not because his performance was any less or any worse than these other four players, purely because on Twitter there's only four nominations, so I couldn't fit him on there. But, you know, good things about his performance, you know, first academy player to play in the first team for quite a long time. It's his first start for Palace, so, you know, the, a bright start, you know, he looks promising. But to be honest, he looked very good early on, but obviously towards the end of the game, obviously where he hasn't played sort of a full match for quite a lo long time, you know, he faded out, unfortunately. But he had a few good shots, you know, running into the area, trying to get crosses in, linking up with Remy at a striking role, and also had a free kick just outside the area, maybe 20, 25 yards out had a shot on it and it just bent it just went over the bar so if that had been a few inches lower it could have been going in top bin so actually a good performance from him not only because he was good offensively but also from dead ball situations from the set pieces he was deadly and also obviously with him being sort of one of the set piece takers he took a few corners obviously we did score from one of them but that was disallowed for a handball from Leddy. so actually you can say that actually Kaika had a pretty good influence on the game but certainly I think he only misses out because because he was quite young, inexperienced, he didn't have as much influence, let's say, as the four other players I'm going to talk about. But obviously going on to talk about it, the, obviously the results of the Twitter poll, obviously in last place with 6% of the votes was Lee Chung Young. Closely followed up with 9% of the votes in third place was Andres Townsend. In second place and a runner-up in this week's poll was Matthew Flamney with 26% of the votes, which means the winner of this week's uh, Twitter poll with 59% of the votes, the super sub himself, Christian Minteka. So congratulations, Christian. I do say this every week. You don't get a trophy or certificate, but you do get my sincere congratulations on what was a very solid performance from you and how crucial it was for you coming on the pitch for actually getting us through the game. And, you know, I'll go on to talk about why I put you on there, but certainly you came or you were meant to be a super sub. You came on and you've done exactly that. But just talking about, obviously, the four players, you know, Matthew Flamini, he played the important role in front of the back four, done that very well, trying to protect them, give them support. Obviously got the assist for Benteke for the equaliser. Fantastic run down the right flank. Lovely cross from him. You wouldn't expect a defensive midfielder to play balls like that. But he did. Fantastic. And obviously Benteke scored from that. Obviously Lee Ching Young as well. You know in the first half especially where he was quite, uh, quite good against his old club. You know he created chances. Passed the ball around quite nicely. Tried to you know weave his way into space. Trying to find passes. So all of that was good about his game. Obviously Andres Tanzen. He's been sort of under par recently. But he got the assist for Benteke, obviously lovely run down the left, cut inside, past the fullback, lovely cross to Benteke, obviously Benteke, lovely chest control, spin to score. And obviously the only bad thing about his performance, yes Townsend was good throughout the game, you know he was quite average good, but there was only certain bits where he was fantastic and obviously that was where he got the assist, that's where he got through on goal and had a shot save. So you know he was good only in burst. And obviously Christian Benteke... You know, he saved Palace's blushes. It would have been embarrassing if we lost to a League One side. So Benteke or, you know, Allardyce brought on the three substitutions. They came on, made an impact. 
Benteke being one of them, you know, he saved us from being embarrassed from a League 2 side, you know. Great awareness, the fact that he came on the pitch, he saw the cross was coming in from Flamini. Lovely direct header into the goal. And then the other one, yes, the cross from Townsend was good, or some people may say it's not good, but Benteke, lovely control, got the ball down on his chest, done a little spin, and then obviously hit it on his right foot, I believe, into the bottom corner. So lovely control there, and actually made the impact. But certainly, very good performance from all of these players. You know, yes, it was a much better performance than, say, against West Ham. You know, the team took advantage of the fact we were playing a slightly weaker opposition let's say and we had an overall better performance than we did against West Ham like I said but still these players stood out for me because of their impact they had on the game and obviously what they gave to it and once again I must mention Sully Kai Kai if there was five nominations he would have been on there because he also had a pretty decent game but all of these players you know they fully deserve it and to talk about my man of the match I think it's pretty clear you know when when you're one nil down you bring a striker on and he scores two goals to save the game and win the game of course you're going to give it to Christian so congratulations Christian you're the double winner of this week's man of the match award so congratulations on them two very good goals which brings you up to 10 goals for the season but also thank you for saving us from embarrassing ourselves by obviously getting us back into the game but now you've heard the match report player rankings are my man of the match that concludes this week's podcast now I've got an exclusive interview with Sam Allardyce and Jason Punchin following the game. Jason, a victory. Um, do you think that's really, really good for the team's confidence? Yeah, I think it's important for players involved in the game today, the players that wasn't involved, the football club staff, everyone about, you know, it's just a little lift that we need. And regardless, obviously, who it's against and what um, competition it is, it's, it's, it's a morale boost for us. And especially, I suppose, defensively towards the end when they were piling men into the box, it's good to stay firm. Yeah, it definitely is good to stay firm. You know, they had sort of chance at the end. It's still a bit nervy where you, you've been on the run that we've been on, you know. And let's just sort of take that as a whole football club and players, staff, everyone connected and take that belief into Saturday against Everton. What's it felt like as a player in the team recently? Has there been an, like, an element of fear sometimes, especially when you go behind? Um, I would say fear, fear, element of doubt for sure. Um, the run we've been on, you know, I've been part of the, the team that's been on the it's not so good run for a long time you know and obviously we've all looked at ourselves and reflected on things ourselves as players individual individuals and we want to create recreate that and everyone's trying their hardest and giving 120 percent you know sometimes it doesn't go your way but hopefully today is a, a building block for us to sort of build the way and get back to that sort of crystal palace way of stopping the goals going in that's a great comeback today two goals from christian i suppose if you get the good delivery into the box he's going to score yeah, definitely. You know, when Christian stays around that back post and he demands the ball there, you know, he's obviously a great threat and he showed that today. And obviously when he stays there and people put the ball in the box, he's a, he's a great threat. And finally, Everton coming up next. Do you think this will give us a bit of momentum going into that? Yeah, definitely. I think momentum. I think more minutes for people that haven't been in the team. Um, you know, I think it was nice to see Soli Kaika to, to get a nice run out today as well. Obviously, like Remy, more fitness. You know, obviously we've got Jeffrey Slip that's coming now as well. You know, so there's competition for places again, and I think together as a group, we're all pulling in the right direction, ready for everything. Thanks, Jason. No Cheers. Sam, how important was that win for the team? Uh, I suppose time will tell on whether it lifts your confidence. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, I think, I mean, overall, we, we had control of the game, and then, of course, again, um, we go 1 0 down to a bit of a wonder goal. But certainly should have converted more of our good play in the first half, our final third play. Should have created a bit more, should have been a bit more clinical with our finishing. And, and of course, uh, when that goal went in, <coughs> excuse me, when that goal went in, of course, it's going to test the players' nerves on where we are at this moment in time, of course. And uh, I'm glad to say they held the nerve today and uh, obviously came back and won the game. And uh, two goals for Christian uh, hopefully will boost his... His, his confidence as well and boost everybody's confidence. Two very good goals, two very different goals. The header, which we all know he's very, very good at. And of course, the touch and the volley, uh, which is a great skill. So uh, glad to get through in the end, but it was, you know, credit to Bolton, come and played and made life difficult for us when, whenever they could. Uh, took advantage of us not getting in front and uh, I think as a spell, they, they thought they were going to create that big upset, and of course, uh, in the end, quality counted in the in their box with the quality of our two goals, and they were very, very good quality. Andros Townsend's run and cross, and then of course Christian's touch and volley. And another home game coming up soon on Saturday against Everton, hoping to get a bit of momentum from this. 
Well, uh, it's all a bit, uh, you know, uh, from our point of view, from our lads, get them recovered. Um, Everton haven't played, they won't play this week. We had to play this game, had to switch the team around. So get the lads recovered and, uh, you know, Everton's obviously going to be very tough on, on the fact they've come with great confidence after beating Man City 4-0 on Saturday. But there's nothing to say we can't be dogged and resilient and frustrate the Everton side and use the ball as best we possibly can to try and break them down. Thanks, Sam. Cheers. So there you have it. Now you've heard what Sam Allardyce and Jason Punchin had to say after the game. That concludes this week's podcast for the game against Bolton. But make sure to come back next week for my post-match review of the game against Everton. So thanks for listening and remember to up the palace. I'm <laughs> gonna